Good afternoon, everybody. Orin Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and today is episode number one of Let's Muse on Mages, and we are kicking it off with one of my favorite mages in the game, a character I have used across multiple arena maps, multiple guild battle maps, and that is Kilfay, who is one of the most versatile mages in this game by far. When she came out, we were told, hey, we're getting this awesome mage who's going to change the game, and she kind of lived up to that hype. So let's look first at some of her stats, some of her skills, see if we can figure out why she is what she is. Uh, first, let's throw her stats on the screen. These are her base stats uh, with my um, guild statues on them, right? So she's getting a couple extra defense in there. But you can sort of start seeing the story of her here, right? She has 2765 HP, which for a mage is pretty nice. You're like, okay, she's got a little little beef to her. I can respect that. Uh, 58 agility. So she's not slow. She's not insanely fast, but 58 base agility. We can work with that. Uh, 8 defense, 6 spirit. A little bit of tankiness to her, but not a ton. Okay. Uh, basic move... 327 magic, okay, so she can do some damage, but it's not insanely high, and you're kind of like, well, nothing's really super special here. All right, well, let's go down a little bit more. Uh, that 20 lightning resist, when she came out, that was so good against two of the main carries in the game at that time, which was Orlando and Frederica. Uh, with the resurgence of Frederica alongside Nivlu, Kilfay has kind of silently snuck back onto the scene here as a good answer to those two units. Combine that with her 15 missile resist that she's rocking, along with 15 slash resist, and the picture starts becoming a little clearer. Now she does have that negative 10 wind resist, uh, but that's not really terrible. Like negative 10 is not bad for her elemental weakness, and you can see sort of here, ah, she does have some good resists in place. She has a little bit of defense built in and it's some nice HP. So, all right, how can I build her? Well, for that, we need to go to her support abilities. Uh, this is one area, in my opinion, where she shines a lot. Uh, only one of these support abilities is bad, and that's March of the Saints. Like, Doom is just not a big part of this game. Maybe it's situationally useful in some, like, PvE stuff. But the rest of these are really good. So she has defense up level 1 from Staff Mage. Uh, that's 12 defense for a mage. That's great. Like, now you're like, ah, maybe we can build her with some defense tanking. And you'd be right. Providence of Lightning. She can boost her magic resist by 12 and get 12 more lightning resist. So a really hard counter to lightning-based teams already. You can already just see that. And then magic up level 1, okay, 30% more magic on top of that base 300 and some, I'm liking that. And you can get a combo of these where you can be like, alright, wait, she's like a bruiser mage. And she might actually be more than a bruiser mage, she might be a tank mage. But let's see, what else can we put on her here? Let's look at her uh, reflex abilities, her counter abilities. Uh, Anti-barrier, really good, a 20% chance to reduce damage taken by 30% from any source. That's physical, that's magic, whatever. She has a 20% chance to just take 30% less damage. That's a great uh, reflex ability. Magic Guard, a 20% chance to take 45% less magic damage. So into a full magic team, if she's fighting that, you'd want to run this one. And then Regenerator, a 20% chance to grant a 10% health re uh, regen on yourself for three turns. Also not bad. I tend to just run anti-barrier all the time because I don't even have to think about it. I just know she has a 20% chance to take 30% less damage. It's just situationally good all the time, which is situationally good all the time is sort of a contradiction, but it's just great. It's a really good counter move. It's not reflex, but it's pretty dang good. And then, she was one of the first units, maybe the first unit in this game, to have her basic attack deal magic damage. So you're like, hold up, unlike my other tanks who just suck at hitting things, like my other tanks when they run out of AP and they just start whacking stuff, they hit for like 100. It's like, alright, who cares, they're just up there tanking. She hits really hard with her basic attack because it does 70% magic damage. So you put her on a team with like Ramu, where you're stacking magic, well, her basic attack is a magic attack. Boom. It hits people very hard. And these are the things that made her kind of unique. You're like, this character is different 
than the other characters in the game, especially for the time when she came out. Now we're going to jump into the client here in a second. We're going to look at her skills because this is where she takes off. Like you can see we've set the stage for her to be pretty good, but looking at her skills, looking at what team she works with, that's where you're going to see her potential like really come through. And then we're going to throw her into some fights. So let's do that now. Um, let's jump into team building uh, right away. All right. So what you're seeing on the screen here is the stat screen for what I like to consider my tank kill fay. Yeah, that's right. This is going to be tank kill fay, and I'm going to show you why. So she's running a plat rope for defense. She's running golem for defense and more pierce resist because her pierce was a negative 10. So we can cover that with golem a little bit. She's at 48 defense and 4,600 HP. Now that by itself would make her a bruiser in my opinion. However, in a mage group, with her casting this buff on herself, I think this can make her a tank. First of all, I want to say she loves to cast this buff. She will start fights by buffing this on herself if you turn it on and just kind of allow her to do it. This is gonna, uh, this is that barrier that you see other people using. It's just gonna reduce all physical damage on her three times. It's super effective at turning those first enemy attacks on her into kind of like negligible damage. And then she's gonna move in close and annihilate him with magic. At least that's the thought. Speaking of annihilating with magic, this is her, uh, what I would call her main ability as tank Kilfay for doing damage, Energy Buster. It has that nice big frontal AOE attack. Now, when she first came out, she would just shoot this thing sideways. And it was like crazy. She would look, go look at somebody in the face and be like, take this Engelbert and then shoot it over there. And you're like, what are you doing? But ever since they fixed it, this move has been devastating. And she's really good at catching two or three people in this. It does large damage. And in a mage group where you're running magic vision cards, oh man, this decimates enemy teams. Um, she also has winged staff on this build. So if it's a longer map, she can buff this on herself to give her move and jump plus one. And that's what um, she's going to be casting early on in this group. Now we're going to have her run Spellblade for tanking. And as you can see, I have put nothing else on for this build except for Taunting Spell. Uh, taunting Spell, y'all know what Taunting Spell is. It's like what Tank Ramza used to bring or Tank Dario brings now. Where nice AoE magic-based slashing attack that does small damage and draws hate. So this is her hate generating ability, and this is what she'll use from range um, on the current map to get that initial hate. Now, we're going to help her go forward a little bit by having Skull in this group, and Skull's going to bring Quicken. So it's going to be kind of awkward, I think, because she's going to be in the middle of channeling stuff and get Quicken sometimes and end up moving forward. And that's just the way the um, agility has kind of worked out with this team that I have, but I'm not too concerned with it because we want her separating from the group. And then we're gonna bring Zombie Ryryu in this group to give his earth element buff to Kilfay and then be like our biggest source of damage. Now look at vision cards here. We're running Ramu, we're running Skull's vision card. If you don't know what this one is yet, Blossoms in the Dark, it's fairly new, but man eater up on magic attacks and give Skull a nice ability to use there. Actually gives anybody who uses a staff that ability. Um, and it's a good vision card on carry Kilfay. You'll see that in the next comp. And then we're running True Cell. So very heavy magic da ba <laughs> magic damaged base team with Kilfay as our tank. So now what we want to do is go find a physical team to fight against uh, and see if Kilfay can do it. See if she can tank those physical attacks. Okay, for our first fight, we have found a slashing team to go against here. We have Engelbert Thancred Ruinstern. Now, this Ruinstern in specifically is a very, very high damage character. So, we're going to need, uh, this will be a really good test to see if Kilfay can actually tank some high damage slashing. Now, she is strong against slashing. She has some nice defense, and she's going to have her barrier up. So, uh... Will it be enough to tank this team? That's what we're going to find out. One thing we definitely have going for us here is that um, they are going to probably be built to handle physical teams. And we're running full on magic. Like Engelbert, weak against magic. Um, Thancred, probably built to, yeah, cast a defense buff. So in that way, we have a nice advantage, which again is one thing that Kilfay kind of brings. 
you can run these like very magic heavy comps with her in it that most teams in like arena and guild wars right now are just not built to handle um yeah so there's a taunting blade from the enemy team we're gonna have to chew through engelbert first clearly but i don't foresee that being a problem now here's there we go that was a triple hit attack from the enemy ruin stern and we tanked it great energy buster to the face and look at that damage that was aoe um it's a short range aoe but with just two spells and a taunting blade to be fair we have completely chewed through the enemy's front line and support and now kill phase onto ruin stern and what can her limit break do to him miss apparently um yeah that's unfortunate so there was a random bit of missing in there but that's something that sometimes happens with rune stern here's a thunder that one shots him like i'm sure kill phase limit break was about to do and we win the fight so that could have been cleaner had there not been a little bit of bad luck rng in there but a win is a win we'll take it let's switch our comp up a little bit and show off kill Fay as a dps slash support instead of a tank slash dps bruiser type okay for our second fight we're gonna go into kill Fay's page here and we're gonna turn her from a tank with taunting spell into a support with white mage uh let's look at white mage real quick for here what does she have well cura is pretty good holy is really good curata very good single target Rays, mm, kind of iffy on Rays. Protect and Shell are good, so she has the basic buffs, but what she's missing is Kiraga and Whole Life. Um, she's not a true healing support, she doesn't have that AI, and she's missing two of the biggest White Mage support abilities, but she still has a good enough White Mage kit that I think it's a viable sub job with um, whichever buff you want to run, in our case, Protect for physical teams, Curata and Cura for heals, and Holy for damage. Uh, we're going to keep defense up and magic up on her. You can see her stats here. We're subbing in the string for more damage. We're giving her this vision card in this group because it gives her this attack. Ruinja, which has a nice little range and height to it, and uh, that extra large damage. So maybe another way of her carrying, and then the magical man eater is really nice. Um, what else to say about this comp? Well, it's mixed damage, which is again a nice thing that Kill Fae can bring. You can kind of just plug her into comps, and she'll work as a support slash damage dealer. And that's what we have here: a really nice mixed damage comp, missile, magic, and slash. So we're basically just going to look for a physical damage team to fight. Here's one. Lots of piercing and lots of AoE on this team. Um, let's just see how we do. Let's uh, restore energy a little bit here. Um, what's Okay, how do we think this is going to play out? What does our comp need to do to succeed, etc.? Alright, we want to get buffs on Agrius. And we want Agrius moving forward, getting that hate, being tanky. We want Kilfe taking the AoE if anybody else is taking some AoE. Uh, she's tanky enough to live through a few of them. Then we want her getting in close and just pummeling them, etc. Now, Nivlu is going to bring Quicken to this group, which is really nice. We love some quick. Oh, she's bringing Haste. Okay, we have Haste on. That's fine. Haste is a good way of keeping Nivlu back. There's the physical shield for Kilfe, so she's ready to rock. And it's kind of a dual bruiser comp here with Agrius and Kilfe. There's Taunting Spell, so we got the hate up. Here's another Haste. So, Nivlu fulfilling her support role really well. A really cool thing about our comp here is both of our damage dealers are also like hybrid supports, which is pretty neat. Now, the enemy's out here chaining a bunch of uh, <laughs> piercing damage, and had they done that before Kilfay had her turn, that would have been a Curata, probably. Instead, it's a Protect. So, was it enough of a Protect for Agrius to live? Yes, Agrius lived through one more, and now, ooh, really nice slow shot, big damage through that elemental weakness there from uh, Nivlu. Agrius finally goes down, so our remaining tanky character is Kilfay. Here comes a Holy, so what kind of damage we got here on the dark unit? Nice big damage. Prox, that Courage, slow arrow, man, Nivlu's target selection there, I'm a little suspect of. 
And then dang it, kill phase AI kind of fails us. She dies charging a spell, but can Nivlu finish him off? There's one down, so it ends up being Thancred versus Nivlu. Okay, she lives through one. Does she have the damage? Oh, barely doesn't have the damage, but she does have the speed, wins the fight, and that thing was a brawl. That thing was just a beatdown. So what went right, what went wrong there? Well, Agrius got out and tanked. Our team was casting their buffs. However, um, the timing didn't work great. The Protect came out instead of Curata, and the Protect came out late. So what can we change before the next fight to see if we can make this better? Well, I think having Haste on for Nivlu was a mistake. I think Quicken would be better. So I'm going to turn Haste off uh, for the next fight, and then we'll do one more in this video. Alright, so for fight three, we have found um, an Agrius and two Gunners. Now, I made a pretty big adjustment to the comp here, where I think having the mixed damage comp is cool, but on this map, and the teams we're fighting against, I actually feel like we could get the support from Skull again, and boost the magic capabilities of Kilfay a little bit more. Um, so yeah, instead of Nivlu Quicken, I'm going to bring Skull for Quicken here. I think there's probably just a little better synergy with him and Kilfay. But Kilfay fill in the same role. She's on White Mage, she's going to buff herself, then she's going to buff Agrius. These are the things that we want. Okay, Quicken from Skull. Here comes the first... Oh no, I'm sorry. Haste from Skull. We left Haste on in this case. Uh, we'll see if that's a mistake or not. Quicken with Kilfay you saw worked kind of weird because she ended up moving in the middle of a cast. So let's see how she does with um, Haste instead of Quicken. This time, our Agrius is going to get her Limit Break off. That's fine. Confuse on the enemy Agrius. We'll take that every time. Here's a Protect from Kilfay. And this is what we want to see. We want to buff up our tank with Protect so our tank can tank, right? Makes sense. Here's a Quicken from the enemy Nivlu onto the Confused Agrius, who will immediately smack her in the face for her trouble. Beautiful synergy there. Loved every minute of that. Uh, meanwhile, our... Ooh, we move into range for like a perfect barrage from the enemy. That's a little unfortunate. But if we take care of this, um, this Frederica right here with Holy, we won't have to worry about that again. And there you see, that's big damage. That's 5,000 damage from Kilfay. Um, in a group that's only running two full magic cards instead of three. Now, Agrius and that Confuse, I mean, you're seeing this, the devastation that Confuse causes right here. And Agrius is up there just tanking like a monster. So here's another Holy from Kilfay. Nivlu's dead. Kilfay has now two shot two people on the enemy team with Holy. So a big bonus to White Mage Kilfay, you can see, is Holy. Like, Holy has nice range. It hits really hard. It's a great spell. I, Skull dodged something, so that was neat. I don't know if I've ever seen Skull dodge before, but cool. So, enemy, oh, and enemy Agrius got her um, accuracy down by Neve Loose Counter, so that's awesome. Here's Flare from Skull, and that will do it. Yeah, that'll do it. So, this team seemed to work better than the other team. Uh, even though we had less mixed damage, the m two mages was pretty good. And two mages in a tank is a pretty nice viable comp, especially when one of those mages is Kilfay, who's bringing her own level of bruiseriness and support to the group. Uh, if you pay attention, like, one of our unit's HP was really low after this fight. Another thing I want to mention before we move on to giving Kilfay her grades is that had this been Guild Wars, her AI would have started the next fight off by healing Skull. So, we would have essentially had three full health units going into fight two, and that's another um, bonus pin for points in uh, Killface scoreboard. Alright, let's move on to giving her some scores and wrapping up this video. Okay, so let's run down her scores. Let's uh, give her an overall and see where we come out at. Okay, here's the criteria I'm judging mages on. Damage, AoE ability, utility, movement, speed, and durability. Um, why am I using those criteria? Because teams of elite scientists put that together and said, this is the criteria to use for mages. Like, Dr. Fauci called me and was like, coronavirus sucks, use these stats for mages. And I was like, okay, dude, I believe you. So let's start at the top. Damage. Hey, you could see it. Her damage is the real deal. 
Um, especially for someone who brings as much other stuff as she brings, her damage is great. I'm going to give her a 90 here. Um, not the highest damage for mages, but really dang high. And uh, she packs a punch. Now, AoE. Here's the other half of that damage score kind of for mages. I got to drop her score down a little bit on AoE to an 80. Maybe her best damaging abilities, like holy, are single target. Now, I love Energy Buster. Love it. The range is really short, and it has some height problems, as you could see in the fights. Taunting spell, AoE, but small damage, and mostly used for that utility to generate hate. So, uh, high damage, yes. AoE ability, yes, but not as good as some other characters like Medina or Skull or someone like that. So I'll just give her an 80. It's respectable. She can do AoE, but she's really got to be up in your face to be effective at it. All right, utility. Her best stat to me. Um, she brings buffs for herself. She brings buffs for your tanks. She brings heals. And she brings hate generation. Like, she can do kind of everything. And she really doesn't suck at any of those things. Is she the best healer in the game? No, oh, she's not in the healing videos, right? Like, I'm not judging her as a healer. Is she the best tank in the game? Nope. But she's not in the tank videos. I'm not judging her as a tank. I'm saying... As a mage, she can succeed at those things, which is saying a lot for a mage. Um, her buffs, like protect and her shield, stack with each other, and she can generate hate. That's great synergy. I love seeing the synergy. Um, so she works great supporting herself. She works great supporting others. And she's a really great unit to have going into the second fight of Guild Wars because she'll kind of do what she needs to do to set your team up for success. So, 95 here for me. Real big boost to her score. Um, yeah, that's her strength in my opinion. Movement. Okay, we're going from her biggest strength to her not biggest strength. Her base movement is 3-1. And even though she has an ability to buff that, her AI will really only use that on uh, more extended maps. Um, yeah. So... I'm not going to give her a super low score here. I'll keep it at 75 because she does have the capability of buffing it. However, her AI will prioritize shielding and protecting and things like that before it will buff her movement. Now, if you have a big map and it's like turn three and she's already buffed herself twice and there's nobody else in range, boom, she'll buff her movement and jump and then she's cruising all over the map. But until then, she's pretty limited in mobility. So just a 75. Okay, 80 or speed 80. There we go. Um, yeah, she's not slow, but she's also not super fast. She could maybe get a little bit higher score here. Like, I could see getting an 82, 83, but I'm going to try and keep it at nice round numbers today. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give her an 80. Her speed's fine. Like, you can play with it because she can use a lot of different um, magic espers. She can wear some gear with agility on it if you need her to. So, 80. Decent. Okay, durability. Hey, here's another green number coming on the board. I'm going to give her a 90. Um, if this was a tank series, like if I was judging her compared to other tanks, well, that's a different ball game. She'd drop down into the 80s somethings. But for a mage, she's easily an A in durability. And in fact, you can kind of run her as a tank, but she's still a mage. <laughs> um, she does everything, but her core is still mage um so i'll give her a 90 here if you want to run her as a tank my biggest bit of advice is build a team around her that's built to delete the enemy as soon as they see them she can tank kind of those first three hits really well with her shield and then maybe one or two more and at that point you need to have deleted the other team if you do that for something like guild wars well she'll start the next fight by healing herself shielding again and she'll be right back out there uh, doing her thing so really solid score there of a 90 now let's look at her little gauge on the right uh it seems to be sitting at a 90 right now i'm feeling pretty comfortable with that i'm gonna roll with that as her final score 90 so an a minus which is a great score um according to this scientifically proven scoring method i love this unit i use her all the time in guild wars in arena if i just feel like playing mages she almost always ends up in that group and I hope that we have maybe a resurgence of mages with Sakura coming out 
etc. So yeah, that's my review for Killfay. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, stay tuned for the rest of the Mage series that's coming out. Check out the Tank and the Support series that have already been released. And yeah, hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Throw me a like, and I will see you in the next video.